Yeah, Lorenzo, I don't get the sense that anyone is waiting. You know, I haven't heard anything here about another group coming. Everyone is just here peacefully. We heard a woman talk just a few minutes ago, and a lot of people are just listening. If you can turn this way, you can just see a lot of people holding signs. It's an extremely peaceful mood here. You can see some people have signs, some people don't. Some people may have just been walking around in this area and wanted to stop by, but some people clearly intentionally wanted to make their way here. But it's just very, very calm in this area. This entire block is really calm, and it's just a lot of groups. You know, there's one main group listening, but then there's also several smaller groups that are just talking amongst themselves. Some people holding signs in solidarity and silent. It's just a really calm mood here, and you don't get the sense that there is another group making their way down here right now. Now, Colby, if you and your photographer, if you're comfortable with this and you feel like it's safe enough to do, if you can go closer to the uh, I know there was a speaker a little earlier right on the cusp of Lafayette Park, uh, just kind of talking about why she was out there. Um, and I thought listening to her talk was, um, was really important because a lot of these protesters, what I've heard at least over the last... Um, couple of days is that they don't feel like America's listening. They don't feel like people are listening or understanding their perspective. So um, if we can just all take a moment to to just listen to, to what some of these people are saying and why they're there, maybe it'll change our perspective. You out here, you want to join an international band of prayer warriors. You go online right now to www.whosoeverbelieve.org. Okay, it seems like she's promoting uh, their their movement, their group here. Right um, look at, I want to look at some of the signs that you have hanging, uh, that people are posting up as well. I see the, the usual, no justice, no peace. Um, I want to get an idea of why some of these people are there. We know why. Uh, let me clarify that. We know why they're here. Uh, but what has driven them to this point? Let's pray. You see there are no more excuses. That's what we've heard from a lot of protesters as well who've said they're just tired of of seeing this play out over and over again and you know getting lip service, if you will, from a lot of politicians. We come to say thank you, God, for being here today, looking after us as you've always done. We come, Father, just to see say, the Black Lives Matter help us, there. Father. You sent down the pandemic the that they might be able to understand the that they have not been their knees enough. You told us, Father, that we had to get down, get down on our knees and look up to heaven for yes. which cometh our help yes. and ask for you to come down here. Yes. Oh, Father, they have been killing us for a long time. Yes. I heard a song, I heard a song just the other day say, who is that? sitting in that chair up under the hanging tree. That be me, that be you, that be you, that be all of us. If we don't have Lorenzo, you can see a lot of people kneeling now. As you said, they were doing, saying a prayer at the moment. And as that's happening, there's also another group of protesters making their way to this area as well. You can get a look at them now coming down the street on H Street. We're right at H and 16th, right outside of Lafayette Square. And it's silent. A minute ago, we heard some chants, and Lorenzo, right now it's silent. It appears that, you know, their fists are raised, and they're not saying anything right now. And that silence, sometimes those are the most powerful moments that we're just going to take in what we're seeing right now. And Lorenzo, I want to add, as soon as they joined that other group, they instantly got down to their knees as well and joined in prayer. We can only assume at this point that the group we're watching come up here to the White House is uh, are some of the protesters who started out over at Howard University um, about an hour ago. They started there with a few chants, with a few messages, and uh, they started watching, uh, marching through the yeah, streets. Yeah, now they're the starting to chant Black Lives Matter. And the group just keeps coming, Lorenzo. You know, as far as I can see from where I am, I, I don't see an end to this group. And still as well, whenever they do get up here, everyone continues to get down on their knees and kneel 
and the chanting just instantly stops when they get to this point. It's really, you know, moving to be here and, and watch. You know, the chants just instantly stop when they see what's going on. It's been also interesting, Colby, to note as well that, you know, in a moment like this, you're just seeing such a diverse group of people yell out of the faces are covered with the masks. But, uh, you know, it's obvious uh, that, you know, there are a lot of, a lot of people here in unison um, who are speaking out with kind of the same message. They want to see an end to this. And the sign that keeps sticking with me is, you know, silence is betrayal. We want more and more people to, to speak out against this injustice and this overt and obvious injustice of uh, what we're seeing right now. You saw a sign there, one that was holding it, some of the other uh, black men and women who have been, been killed while in police custody. Don't shoot! Don't shoot! Now they're chanting, you can, I hope shoot. you can hear everything, Lorenzo. Hands up, don't shoot. Don't shoot. And you have people sign saying, I can't breathe. All lives can't matter until black lives do. A, a wide array of signs here today. Don't shoot. 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 And I still can't see the end of this group here. You know, they have just, you know, the group that came is so large. They've just filled this entire block of H Street. No peace. 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 Yeah, Colby, I, I saw the, uh, the parents, or there was a little kid there as well. I, mean, I didn't want to interrupt because it seemed like they were uh, either praying or taking in that moment of silence. Uh, I think it's good. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna make our way. And for those of you watching us on uh, our video, I want to help you understand where these protesters are. That's obviously St. John's Church. Uh, if you sit and watch her the presidential inauguration, we're going to see again. That's usually the first time he goes to church in the morning, right across the street from La Because Lafayette. I want him to see what it looks like to stand up against injustice. What have the conversations been like, you know, in your house? They're painful. It's hard to, for children to see this in the world because they think it's a better world than this, some of them. And when they get to see the truth of it, it's very disturbing for them. But I want him to know that he can do something about that. And how old is he? Uh, I'm 11. Can I ask you? I I'm almost 12. What is it like for you to be out here and see this and be part of it? It's moving. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I think it's important to know what's going on in the world, and this is a really big problem that's still happening today. This is just, it's not good. Yeah. Colby, how did his mom explain it to Thank him? You what, so did, much. what did she tell him? Can you hear me, Colby? How did you, yeah, how did you explain everything to him? I explained to him that our brothers and our sisters are sometimes attacked by our police people and that they are um, that they are in a special danger, some of our brothers and sisters, just because the color of their skin. And that this is a this is a grave injustice and no one should have to fear for their son's life just because of who they are, just because of the color of their skin. How challenging is it to have a conversation with you know your young son about this? It's my responsibility as his mother and as his first teacher to remove the ignorance that the world will offer him. And I, I really believe that that's the best thing I can do for him. I won't be able to do it alone, but I'll be his first teacher in that way, I hope. And for him to understand, how, how has that been for both of you? I think that understanding, you know, you live into that. I don't expect them to understand, just as I don't understand the problem fully. It's something that we should be curious about, how to find justice, how to use reason and the truth to guide us. And it's something you live into, everyone. And so for children, 
you know, it takes time, but this is part of the responsibility of all the citizens. Is this the first protest that you guys have came out to? I, I have marched on behalf of women. Um, I marched uh, with Nelson Mandela in South Africa in 1993 and 94. Um, I worked with Bishop Tutu and demonstrated for the Truth and Reconciliation Commissions. This is his first protest. This is his, yeah. his first protest. And of you know the protests happening, why today? Why today? Because I sat around yesterday worrying about whether it was appropriate for my child and safe, and I decided that really having the courage to know what to be afraid of and what not to be afraid of is important for me and for him to learn. And there's nothing to be afraid of when people are demonstrating. Well, thank you so much for talking with us. And Lorenzo, the group is also moving. Uh, uh, really powerful and important message uh, that mother assume they are watching what's taking place there, but uh, in terms of their their uh, their force and uh, the, the image they're trying to portray, uh, it doesn't seem to be the same as what we saw uh, later in the day yesterday, perhaps because these protests are expected to be peaceful. Uh, it's early on in the day, and uh, this is how they were yesterday until uh, they had to put in their riot gear when uh, they did get word that there were a few agitators in the, in the crowd. Um, so what we're looking at here, again, this is playing out exactly the way we, uh, the way it did. Um, around this time yesterday, but then at about four o'clock, uh, it sort of it, it took a shift. You had the peaceful protest, but then you had a group um, along Pennsylvania Avenue uh, that started jumping on top of some of the U.S. Secret Service cars. Uh, they threw objects through the the windshield. Uh, some folks also broke graffiti on the side of those patrol cars and slashed the tires. Um, it kept going right into the face of some of these uh, U.S. Secret Service officers. Um, at this time yesterday. So things escalated pretty early on in the day and uh, seemed to keep going for, for hours and hours yesterday. They just didn't relent at all. So uh, that's another reason why we're watching this play out today. One, to, to hear the message, to hear from some of these people about uh, the change they'd like to see, but also to make sure that uh, you know this does remain peaceful as some of the protesters, the organizers of these protesters, uh, protests rather, have um, promised. So what's happening right now, Colby? I see a few people just kind of straggling along. And 
They seem to be drifting away from Yeah, Lorenzo, uh, the, uh, the group... Yeah, Lorenzo, the group just left here and we're waiting to, you know, double check with our other crew, Jess Arnold, to see if, in fact, that was the group coming from Howard or if there is another group coming. Um, but they have continued to march on down H Street. Uh, Would you like us to go ahead and go you, with out them? Of, out of curiosity, the woman behind you, uh, can you find out why she's there? If she's a, a tourist, if she's just watching, uh, what this moment yeah. means for her? Yeah, the red shorts. Hi, how are you guys? Well, thank you, how are you? Good, we just wanted to see, are you guys here to be a part of the protest? Are you visiting? We are, we live here. And so you guys came here as part of the protest? Yes. What message do you want to get across by being here today? Um, that we're really tired of racial injustice and racial inequality and that we, we'd like this to stop. We want this to stop. Is this your first time coming out here protesting? Uh, this particular issue, no, <laughs> but because we live in Arlington, Virginia, we've come down often for protests here. It's the first time that we've not been allowed into Lafayette Park, which is kind of unusual for us. And we were, the three of us were remarking on how that's really unusual that we're not able to go in and protest um, closer to the White House. What was it that motivated you and you have your whole family here to come out here? Um, we have part of our family here. My husband and I are lucky we have five uh, beautiful children of whom we're very proud. This is uh, number four. Um, and uh, we can't sit by quietly anymore. We can't be quiet anymore. Watching everything unfold, you know, we've had so many protests over the last few days. How has that been with you? You haven't been out here. How has that you know, resonated with you? Um, it feels very frustrating, uh, particularly, uh, I mean, it's a frustrating issue in general if, if you love people and believe in equality, but COVID is actually making it much more difficult. Um, I have an underlying health condition, which makes me very susceptible to COVID. And as a family, we actually sat at the dinner table and really talked about how important this protest was. and. Were we willing to get sick to come down and do it? And we agreed as a family that we were. And we're doing our best to stay six feet, but it's kind of tricky. Um, thankfully, there are a lot of people here, which is a wonderful thing. So it's a uh, but COVID has definitely made it more difficult to try to do the right thing. But even despite COVID and the effects that you are aware of that could happen, you feel like this, this is too important for you to miss? Oh, absolutely. I think... Um, the only way things are going to change is if everyone decides they need to change and not quietly. I, I don't condone violence. I don't think that's helpful. Um, but I think... Puzzle is we are in a pandemic right now. So you see... A lot of people you see around, a lot of people do have masks on, but then again, you do have some people that are choosing not, you know, not wearing masks and wearing masks. And, you know, there is large groups. The group took off there. And I would say just from what I'm seeing, it's almost about 50-50 people wearing and wearing not. And people are in close quarters. But as that woman said, who has underlying health conditions, it was worth the risk for her to be here and have her voice heard with so many others. Really putting life on the line great chat with her, Colby, and, you know, it also shows the importance of having these these signs as well. Yeah, they, they play a role usually in protests, but with a lot of people trying to keep their, their distance to a certain degree, which is almost impossible in a scenario like this, but faces are covered, the, the message can, can get muffled to a certain degree, so uh, these signs are, are more important than ever for people to, to, to get their point across, their message across, and uh, again, for those of you who are with us right now, who are just uh, clicking on. This is, you're watching what is supposed to be a protest uh, at the White House, uh, outside of Lafayette Square. Uh, a little earlier, about an hour and a half, we were at Howard University. We had a, we had a crew starting out there where this protest began and what the organizers are calling a, a peaceful march for the injustice and equality of African Americans uh, in America. They started there. They started marching uh, toward the White House uh, where Colby Satterfield is right now. And, uh, another group is there at the time. So we're not sure if that how the university group has already made it to the White House or if they are still uh, in the group. That's quite a strong thing. But yeah, a lot of these folks just want to say. Hey, Lorenzo. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Bobby. Hey, so I just had a woman walk out of the house on the road and.
Mr. Rubber Bullet's playing and tear gas. And, I don't know, it's just, it's been powerful to see that. It's been nice even in, in the midst of it. It's just great for all the protesters. You said you have a friend that's a Secret Service agent as well, so you, you're seeing her. Yes, yes, my best friend is a Secret Service agent. So I was actually just hugging her across the barricade just now, and her boyfriend ended up in the hospital last night getting stitches. And, and yeah, you really feel the intensity of it on both sides. Praying for the Secret Service officers and praying for the Secret Service yeah, because I think it's so hard for them. I actually interacted with some African American police officers yesterday, and I was like, "This is awful because you had to see someone that bears your uniform, but doesn't stand for what you stand for. Like, do something, you know." And and they explained to me that they're grieving as an African American, but they're also receiving a lot of intensity as a police officer. And yeah, so I just got to pray with them as well. And I really just believe prayers and answering God will move. And, Thank you for taking the time to come up. I really appreciate it. <laughs> so, you know, when she approached me and she had been here, she said last night and then again today, and just, you know, as we're hearing from a lot of people, they just feel compelled to be here and try and do what they can to add their voice to everyone else's voice. Yeah, Colton, I want to take a time out to also point out that while these protests are underway, we have seen... Um, you know, a lot of the uh, law enforcement, local law enforcement, federal law enforcement bearing the brunt of this locally. Um, there are a lot of good officers, a lot of friends who are DC police officers. Um, I've come to know a lot of police officers in other states and cities. And um, they are good people. They're really good people. But as we heard from some of the other folks as well. Thank <laughs> you. 